Uh, hi everyone, I'm Alexa Van Haddam. I'm a student at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm working on a computational project in island nucleation and thermal growth with Professor Jacques Amar. And the physical model that we're trying to study, the motivation for studying this, um, we heard actually several products today on thin films and their uses in semiconductors and optics. And there's a desire to create a really homogenous film without roughness, and so we're interested in how these films can be grown. And one way that they're grown is molecular beam epitaxy, in which individual particles are deposited about one at a time, kind of layer by layer. And so there are two main processes. There's deposition, which is a new particle, or a monomer being deposited. And there's diffusion, where an existing particle on the substrate can make a nearest neighbor hop to a neighboring location on the substrate. Um, and so islands form when some set number of adjacent monomers form bonds amongst themselves and it becomes a immobile island that no longer diffuses. And here we have a picture just of a cadmium telluride solar cell with several different films. So the computational model I'm working on, um, I made a model in C code and using a 2D matrix to model the substrate and the location of the particles. And then we also keep a list of monomers that can make nearest neighbor hops. And in more complicated models, this might be like multiple lists that have the different types of monomers. Um, I'm writing kinetic Monte Carlo simulations in which the two possible events are carried out with the probability of their rate divided by the total rate, with the two events being, again, deposition and diffusion. And so the parameters I'm working with are the lattice size, which I implement periodic boundary conditions, so the lattice size shouldn't have a huge effect. Uh, the diffusion rate, the deposition rate, and then the key parameter is the ratio between these two rates. And here I just have a picture I made of showing just the two-dimensional matrix and some of the things that you might have in it. And then another challenge of my project has been creating uh, visual representations. And so this is using a visual language called processing and just showing a model I did of uh, no barrier, so it's a simple simulation, small lattice size of 128, and a medium ratio d over f of 10 to the 9. And so you can see that pretty early on there's fractal growth, and this is due to the detachment limited aggregation in which as soon as um, a small island is formed, other particles diffuse in and are likely to be stuck to pieces already sticking out, which gives you these nice fractals. Uh, so here are some more results that we look at. We look at the island density and the monomer density, which are given as per site, so divided by the number of sites. Uh, and this is averaged over time runs for better statistics. You can see in red the island density. This is a log log plot. So initially, the linear shows that there's a power relationship between the two. And then as the coverage increases, so as more of the substrate is covered, the island growth saturates. And so you're not getting any new islands, you're just getting bigger islands. Uh, the monomers, on the other hand, start off increasing also about a power relation and then drop off pretty quickly because once you get bigger islands, as soon as a new particle is deposited, it's going to diffuse really quickly and join the existing island. So this was run on the Ohio supercomputer with a larger lattice size of 1024 and again, we averaged over 10 runs and I'm going to be doing probably like 200 runs that will average for better statistics. And so now Moirkrat is also working on the there's an established theory that there's another relationship between the island density n and this ratio of d over f. And we know that's a uh, power relation with a negative power, and that it's dependent on the critical island size, which is one less than the smallest stable island. And so the theoretical prediction is that chi is going to be equal to i divided by i plus 2. And in this simple model that I'm working with, where any monomer is fused to become an island, uh, i is equal to 1, and we would expect to n to go as r to the negative one third. These are the results I have just in preliminary, and I'm getting something that's a chi of, or of uh, 0 0.33, which is close to negative one third, and correlates well with theory. So then the real question is that recent experiments have found chi's that are greater than 1. And so this is clearly inconsistent with this chi equals i by the x, so you can never get anything greater than 1 with that equation. And so a possible explanation is this attachment limited aggregation in which there are barriers to join islands, and that just refers to an energetic or energetic barrier where it's not energetically favorable to join the islands, so the probability that a monomer joins the island is decreased. So this could account for the discrepancy, but when I ran the simulations, which I showed again on the right, the blue line shows a barrier for island formation or island um, 
joining. And instead of chi increasing, chi actually decreased to negative point, or point 0.31, which totally you know, ruins this theory that just a single ion could cause this discrepancy in the chi value. And so what I'm going to be working on later this summer is barriers that vary with island size and simulating more complicated lattices to try to just, again, account for this inconsistent result. So you have a um, triangular lattice down here. Is that, mm -hmm. I assume that's not any more difficult to set up, really. Right? No. The, um, the lattice itself is still modeled as a 2D array, just with a shift, so each row is moved. The more complicated part in this is that you would have um, critical island size that are larger. So like a, if a small stable island is, say, uh, six or seven particles, the critical island size would be six. And so then in keeping track of which islands can diffuse, you might have different rates of diffusion if you have smaller islands, rather than them just being immobile. So that becomes a lot harder to simulate. Any other questions? <laughs>